Hey there, Booksmiths. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Angie and wanted to bring you up to date on what I posted in the community this morning that I was going to work on an experiment. The experiment was, could I create a GPT and novel crafter? And I'm happy to announce that yes, not only could I create a GPT and novel crafter, I created one for not safe for work content. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did it and I'm going to show you how it works. So let's dig in. As usual, I have instructions. Everything is lined out nice and neat here in a Notion document that you'll find some of the information right from my GPT that I created, as well as several resources that I think will be super helpful. Now, my GPT is actually specific for creating plots for romance novels. I have it set up right now to do science fiction romance novels novellas actually and if you don't do romance novels if you don't do science fiction novels that's okay you can just adapt it to whatever you need to do so let's go ahead and let's dig into the process here we are in novel crafter and for this project i actually created a new novel and you can actually see it right here and not safe for work romance gpt you can use the same concept if you are going to create a specific GPT for each of your series or maybe even each of your worlds. The first step that we're going to take is we're actually going to determine the steps that we need to plot a story. And I, I've got mine here. I've got steps to plot. It's pretty simple. The idea here is if, if we're using a not safe for work model, they tend to go off the rails. And we want to keep them to task. We want to let them know, hey, this is what we're going to do first. This is what we're going to do second, third, fourth, and whatnot. So I had a discussion with one of the LLMs. Actually, I think it was Mixtral. And I, I basically asked it. I was like, okay, what do I need to do to write this story? And I gave it this spicy novella chapters outline. First, I wanted to determine the concept. Then I want to determine what tropes that I want to use. So we've got, we're going to talk about, we're going to do the characters next. Now notice I've got them set as FMC, so female main character, and an MMC, male main character. In the Notion document, I've actually put some instructions if you are writing a same-sex couple, or if you're doing a menage or a reverse harem or anything like that, some additional instructions on how to handle this world building and then the tone and then the plot so obstacle internal subplot external i also want to determine how they're going to meet i also want to i can put any, anything here about the love scene about the resolution so usually the llm gives you better plot if it knows where it's going so you have to plot with the end in mind and then you can put a little bit of information about the epilogue. So if you wanted them to be married and have a kid, or if you want them to be getting out of the business, if it's like a mafia person, or if she becomes a part of the circus or something, there you go. Now, point of view, I set mine in here for the purpose of coming up with this plot. I wanted it to know what my point of view is. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to call in the outline that I want to use and it is right here and you can see it's blue because my frameworks are all blue and then you can also see as I uh, roll my mouse over it it turns yellow because it's a link and so whenever this document is called it's going to call this other one this novella chapters now my no novella chapters are the second thing in my list which is adding your outline template now, I can't share with you my outline template. It's something I bought. I bought it from TNT Author Service. I have the link in the Notion document along with a coupon code if you want to buy it off their website directly, or you can also buy it off of Amazon and get the ebook. But you don't have to use that. You can use any kind of LLM that you want to come up with a framework. Now, the reason I'm using a framework is twofold. So I'm using this to establish consistency across books in a series. So I want them to have the same structure. Now, the second thing that this also does is 
it helps you keep your co-writer, which is the LLM, on task. If you don't give it some structure, it's not chat GPT. We're working with not safe for work content. And unfortunately, they aren't quite as smart as chat GPT. Chat GPT is really super good at sticking to what it, you have asked it to do eight or nine chats ago. Unfortunately, with these, we have to be hand-holding. That's why we're using an outline template. Okay. So I've included some additional resources for other genres. There's other places you can go and buy these things. Or like I said, you can just chat with ChatGPT and say, hey, can you give me a sample outline for whatever genre you want to do? Now, the next step is going to be to add genre specific content. So what is genre specific content? What does that mean? So to me, that's tropes. Not just tropes, though. It's also going to be universal fantasies. It's going to be if you have a specific tone definition going in that you want to use, I'm actually going to chat and figure mine out. And also, you can put in themes. And so if you're doing something a little more naughty, you can also put in things like what are their kinks? So if your characters have specific kinks or you're doing a specific type of erotic romance that has BDSM. What are the things that the LLM needs to know? How do you define it versus how does it define it? You want to keep it on a short leash. Again, you are the one in charge. But we've got abduction trope. We've got alien abduction trope. We've got amnesia, billionaires, celebrities, and they're all in alphabetical order. I've also got butter. So this is from uh, a book called Seven Figure Fiction. That's where the universal fantasy and the butter comes from. And if you haven't read that book, I highly recommend it. So we've got tropes. We've got our butter. We've got our universal fantasies. Next step is going to be to add these genre specific prompts. Okay. So let's come down here to prompts. Now, when you guys saw my last video on setting up not safe for work scene beat completions we were up here we're actually going to be down here in the workshop chat this time and you can see i have a couple different ones already so we've got the paranormal romance insta love developmental editor and this is actually in your notion document the only thing that i changed on here besides clicking the not safe for work is I put here, you are an expert developmental editor with a specialization in writing character-based instant love stories for an adult audience. You have the extensive experience in crafting and refining compelling narratives within the paranormal romance genre with a keen understanding of their unique conventions and reader expectations. You work with authors, they will ask you questions about their story, and you will answer them. We've put the information in there. The next step is to tell it how to respond to us. And that's what we're doing here. And I also have this erotic SFR developmental editor. And so the only thing I did different here is in writing erotic science fiction romance stories. If you are writing about contemporary romance, you can put it in here. And just make sure that not safe for work button is checked. That's going to make sure that you don't go in there and use Claude or chat GPT and lose your access to the model. I will say I mostly used auto for what I did today. And you can see I have my temperature at 0.6. If you put it lower at 0.4, that's where I started. And it was a little too literal. It's going to do exactly what you ask it. And it's not going to be very imaginative. Let's go ahead and let's start playing with it. So let's come up here to chat. And you can see that I did some chats today after I got it all figured out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to select my AI and I'm going to use my erotic SFR dev editor. I'm going to go ahead and put it on auto as well. And I'm going to copy the chat that I used last that I, I was super happy with. Okay, let's work through the steps to plot. And as you can see, it is a link, which means it is over here in the codex. So it's going to pull this codex entry when I hit send. 
And we wanted to tell it to start with step one. Otherwise, it will try to do everything. But we wanted to take it slow, one step at a time. So let's go ahead and hit send. Okay. So it's going to ask us some questions about our concept. So is it part of a larger series or will it be a standalone novella? What is the central theme? You don't have to have answers to all of these things. And even if you're not sure what you want to do, you can just come down here and say, I want to write a standalone novel about a woman who is abducted from Earth and taken to a distant planet. She ends up being saved by someone in the alien mafia. Don't ask. I have no idea where that came from. Let's go with, please give me five concept ideas. And we'll hit send. Okay. So the FMC is abducted from Earth and taken to a distant planet where she is sold into slavery. She is rescued by the main male character, a member of the alien mafia who is tasked with keeping her safe. As they spend more time together, they develop feelings for each other, but their love is forbidden due to his criminal lifestyle and her status as a human outsider. Okay, we're going to just go with this one because I don't want to read through the others. Let's go with this concept. And I like to put the name of it just so it doesn't get any crazy thoughts. Okay. Okay. Let's see what it does. Okay. So it wants to explore some tropes. So it's going to pick some out for us. Okay, so it picked out the rescue romance, fish out of water, enemies to lovers, forbidden love, as well as strong female lead, bad boy with a golden heart, uh, mysterious stranger, and again, fish out of water. So these are character tropes versus these are tropes for the story itself. I actually want to call in some of my own tropes. I'm not thrilled with all of these. Let's use the following. Okay, let's use for the story trope, alien abduction trope. Okay, now that I put it and it's the same, I put it the same way as it is over here under tropes. Now you can see that it has a little bit of line underneath it and it's green because all my tropes are green. And then when you hover over it, it turns yellow. So this means that it's actually going to pull the article for the codex. And here we go. Okay. Let's see what else. We're going to put the mafia trope. Pretty sure it's in there. Yep. Okay. What else? Let's do forbidden love trope, which is actually already up there. Okay. I think that's enough. And then we'll do character tropes. We will do the alpha trope and we will do the bookworm trope. 
trope as well. And let's see what it says. So now it's going and taking the information uh, from our codex and putting it over here into context. And then let's see. Here's an example of how these tropes could be incorporated into your story. The FMC, a bookworm and librarian from Earth, is abducted by aliens and taken to a distant planet where she's sold into slavery. She's rescued by the male main character, a powerful and dominant alien mafia boss who's intrigued by her intelligence and love of books. Despite the fact that their love is forbidden by both their societies, they can't deny the intense attraction between them, because of course not. And as they navigate the dangerous world of organized crime and try to find a way to be together, they must also confront the internal and external obstacles that threaten to tear them apart. There we go. We're actually going to figure out what the internal and external obstacles are here shortly. But next is world building. Actually, should be characters, I believe is next. If it tries to hop onto something else, just put it back on task. Uh, let's continue to characters. Oops. I always forget about that. I always try to press enter. Okay, we've got a main female character named Sarah, who's a librarian, and Kale, who is a mafia boss. Alien mafia. Okay. Let's see. We will go on to step four. Oh, actually, before we go on to step four, let's give these people some last names. Please give my characters last names. Okay, so it actually gave us some options. Obviously, I don't want to name her Sarah Thompson because Thompson is like one of those AI names. We will. Let's go with Sarah Davis. Yeah, we'll call her Sarah Davis. And Kale's an alien. I don't understand why his name's going to be Kale Knight or Kale King. That's just silly. Please give me a alien. And alien. Angie, come on. Sounding. Last name for Kale. Kale, yeah. Go. There we go. Okay, we'll name him Kale Varick. Please move on to step four, world building. Okay, so now it's going to run. It's going to give me some world building stuff. I am unfortunately not going to read it all because... We're already 30 minutes in. And I don't think any of us want to be here all day. Okay. So let's pretend that this was amazing. We added in some more information, such as the name. Oh, let's get the name of the planet. What is the name of the planet? What is the name of Kale's species? Of alien. Xanadu? Wow. Okay. Elysium. That reminds me of a Cell Dweller album. We'll just call it Zephyr because I don't want to go looking for names. Is the name of the planet. 
and Xanthus is the name of the species. And you can always go to a different LLM to figure out some better ideas for that. Okay. The tone will be a mix of adventure, romance, and erotica. The pacing will be fast. Okay. Romance will be steamy and intense. Erotica will be explicitly graphic. Yes. And it will have moments of humor and levity to balance out the darker elements of the plot. Fantastic. That's what I want. Okay. So let's move on. Next section is going to be on the plot. And we're going to figure out the obstacle, subplot, meet cute, all the rest of these things. Great. Let's move on. Okay, we've got our internal conflict. We've got our external conflict. Our meet cute. Love scene. Resolution. Epilogue. Oh, and it is even started giving us our chapters. But we need it to. There's actually 14 chapters and an epilogue. So it jumped the gun here. Now you want to go back and make sure your obstacle, your subplot, your meet cute, love scene, resolution, epilogue, all of this is to your liking. Okay. Great. Let's try to build the outline using. And we're going to use SFR novella chapters again. Incorporate the information from above. Not incorporated, incorporate. And let's hit send. And everyone. Okay. Again, these are super vague because we didn't go through and tell it specific things that have to happen, specific things that are supposed to happen. We didn't ask questions. Okay. For some reason, it's only going to chapter eight. Let's ask. Why... Let's go back here. SFR. Novella chapters has 14 chapters and an epilogue. Why do we keep getting eight instead? Okay. It apologizes for the confusion. Yeah, this is a kind of a bit of a hot mess. Okay, at least it went past chapter eight, uh, eight this time. There we go. All the way to the epilogue. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up for today. It's been a bit of a long one. My apologies. I just really wanted to share this with you. Be sure to get a copy of the Notion document and you can follow step by step to create your not safe for work romance GPT or your thriller GPT or your urban fantasy GPT. I'm eager to hear how you guys did. Were you able to do it? Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to share this with you again because I've got content that I purchased from people 
in here. There's several different resources. There's different books. I can tell you that a lot of the stuff that I have put in here has come from different books on different tropes. And then I put my own spin on it. And so that's a, a great way to personalize your books if you're using a framework. But not all of your books are going to be the same because you're the one who is creating them. You have your background, what you've been through, your different ideas, and that's what's going to make your book shine over someone else. Even if you're using the same template that I'm using, your book isn't going to be anywhere near the same as mine. Be sure to like subscribe. And if you want to comment, let me know what you thought. I know it was involving to create this, but I think if you create it one time and you can use it forever, it's great investment, at least in my opinion. So you guys have an amazing day and we'll talk to you later.